note about this video. I disassembled a whole heck of a lot more than I really think I needed to to get this job done. But it's going to show you how the whole thing comes apart and goes back together. And you can absolutely get the pieces changed out when you do this. There's a better than average possibility that if you just pull the bottom two screws in the back, that the back cover will flip up and you can pull it off without even taking the handle off that I do and still get at that thing. It's going to be a lot tighter and a lot more difficult to get a wrench in there and get your hands in there to get that igniter assembly out. But I don't know that you really need to take apart the entire unit in the manner that I did in order to get it done. That said, I do get it back together and we do fix it in the end. Thanks for watching. Well, howdy folks. Welcome back. It's been a while. Been up hunting. My wife did really good. I got bored and didn't bother. But one of the casualties of our trip was this little buddy heater, which we were using to keep her warm in the stand, as you got to have all the comforts of home in a deer stand. Uh, and from what I believe is going on, the thermistor has gone bad, which is basically the flame eye. If you see this little thing sticking up over there, when you fire it off, that flame is supposed to heat that. And once it gets hot enough, it will allow the gas to stay on and get the thing running. But let's see if we can do, let's see if it'll repeat what I was just doing a minute ago. Usually you hold it on for 20 or 30 seconds and it will then, see, it won't. We'll hold it on a little longer, see if it'll work. Nope. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat that thing with this, just like that. Yeah, I've just got the stick match. This thing isn't on. I just got the st the match, uh, you know, the portable match right on that thermistor. Get it heated up really good. I'm going to switch it over, and now it'll stay running. You can turn the heat on. The heat is on. But what's going to happen, let's we'll turn the light off. You can see that the heat is on. But you notice that fire isn't really touching that little metal piece down there. Let's see if it'll do it. Then, And what happens is, as that thing cools off, it will shut off. So it is unable to keep the thing running, even though everything's fine. You can get a replacement one of these. I got this from Tractor Supply. Let's see, where's the part number? I think that may be the part number right there. F273401 replaces number 73404. You see that's this heater. It's for the MH9B and the MH9BX. And this is the second time I've had to do this. We bought this heater in 2014. This failed in 17. I replaced it because these aren't terribly inexpensive. You, know, you might be able to find them on sale for like 70 bucks, but usually they're like 100. So this is only 15 or 20, depending on where you can find it. The thing is, what I remember is this is the most miserable thing in the world to try to take apart. It was, it was terrible. And I don't recall exactly why, but I think what I'm going to do is we're going to put this one in, we're going to take it apart, put this one in, but I'm almost wondering if I could get in there with a screwdriver and bend it down a little bit, bend that piece down, and get it into the flame if it would actually work. And I think I'm gonna try that before 
I get in this. So I'm gonna go grab a tool and we'll be right back. All right, the first thing you need to do, no matter what you're doing, is this grate, you pull up on it. And then you throw the thing on its back. And that comes off. Now, you get down in there. There's a little bit of crud in there, but it doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. Now that's not terrible considering this thing spent the vast majority of its six years of life outside. The fun part comes is, obviously you gotta get under this thing to get in it. So first thing I'm gonna do though is get a screwdriver and see, maybe, Mm, man. Um, hmm. Don't try this at home, kids. Yeah, that's not working. <laughs> yeah, so it's still not going to heat that flame eye enough. So that flame eye is wearing out. Well, we're going to shut this thing off somehow. There it is. And now I'm going to mount the camera a little bit better. And we're going to try to take this thing apart. Get that piece swapped out with this one because it's simple once you get in there there's only a couple of bolts and a few fittings and see if we can make this thing work all right so we pulled the bottle off and first thing you got is you got three phillips screws and a hidden one up here on each side and i also think you've got to pop the phillips screws out around the handle to separate it because that's also holding it together i mean this thing is a a, a piece of work so that's the first thing we're going to try to do don't drop them Then, you actually, once you get that back cover off, there's actually a screw here and on the other side. Doing good tonight. And you've got a plastic washer and a spring washer that stack on each side as a spacer inside of that thing. So once you get that off, it becomes a little bit easier. So now we're going to try to separate this side with these three screws.
Definitely separated from the bottom. So then, I think this pulls off, and you gotta get this side next. that's off then you can flip it over <laughs> and the back comes off at this point if you really work it you can most likely get that igniter system out of there there's one screw that I missed the, until I figure it out eventually uh, that's pointing towards the back and you can pop that off and it'll slide out but it's going to be really cramped to get in there and take the little fittings off for the gas and to change the other piece without removing the side panels there's a few other things that I disassembled while we were in here that I didn't need to in the end but I was able to get it all the way back together and I'm gonna leave it in because it's going to show you basically how this thing comes apart and how you can put it back together so there you go <laughs> that's off then you can flip it over <laughs> and the back comes off and if you think you can get to it from here <laughs> I'm not sure it may be possible to get to it from here we're gonna look the screws go in from the front so now that the back is off and the bottom is loose you've got two screws up here all of these are different sizes by the way of course but I'll say that it's not a Ford design because they're not seven feet long Way, so don't ruin it. For the side pieces, there's actually a screw in here on each side, and I think that will allow you, it'd be easier with a stubby screwdriver, and once we get these off, Which are, of course, different sizes. Then you've got two more screws in here to take off. different yet again
Okay, so then this side piece can come off. See if the other one will play nice. This one is acting as if it's attached to something else. I think it's attached to some of the controls here. But we're getting there, we gotta get to here. Right now, what has to come out is the actual ceramic. Let's see what we've got. That appears to be held in place. <laughs> and again, let's look at something. Now that we've got it down to here, I see one screw down here this silver screw that may be holding that whole back plate on. So we're going to try to pop that out. See if anything interesting comes loose. I'm sure there's a manual for this. and Probably would have made sense if I had bought it. That may have been it. That may be what we needed to do. It may be just as simple as that screw. So now I'm going to get a, pl a pair of uh, wrench and unhook this pipe. This is the gas line. So we're going to get to that in a minute. All right. So this fitting is what is that? A, oh, I thought that was a half. It's actually a 12 millimeter. Half may work. It's not a 3/8 or a 7/16. So. Disconnect that guy, pull him out of there, and then this guy comes out. And what you notice, I'm going to get the camera and bring it down here, is this igniter wire has to be pulled off and then you have to follow this wire around for the thermistor to wherever it plugs in which appears to be right here on this switch so let's see what's that look like it's pushed in there Set the camera back up and use two hands again. So we're gonna, there it goes. Just twist it and pull. And just pull that off. And that's your old one. Now this is an interesting little piece and it is a replacement piece for the jet that goes in there I think I do believe that I did change it the last time so I'm probably going to do it again just for grins but here's what you have this is the new one and as you can see it's mounted on a bracket so you end up having to take these two screws out feel like they have Loctite on them, strangely. Don't lose the orientation. Snug those down really good. Okay. 
make this guy back in here, first things first, plug this igniter back onto that. This has an interesting little way it attaches. There's a slot, there's a tab in there and there's some slots that this fits on. On one side and then that screw goes in and holds it in place. And that was this little tiny screw, which I'm fairly certain I will not be able to put in one-handed, but we'll try. a little bit to get it a bite. Snug that down really good. And you can get this wire up out of the way. Plug it in over there. Take your gas line connection. This other one is just pulling that piece out over here, it just unthreads, and, re and pull this wire off and replace it with this piece, and then we're going to try to put it all back together. So we're going to do that quick. Again, that's just uh, to like an even maybe a 5 16th or maybe an 8 millimeter. And once we get that changed out, since it's here, we're going to try to put it back together. Okay, so that piece came out. It was, uh, I was able to do it easily with a 5 16 No problems, didn't strip it, just loosened it up, popped it out, popped the wire back on, and now it is time to put this monster back together. I've put these two screws back in it because it seems that I didn't need to take them out. Okay, so you'll have that. Now what I need to do, I think, Good gracious. Is try to get this side back on and then put the whole thing together to where it's kind of sort of assembled. So we're going to try that. The fun part is trying to line up all these holes at the bottom. Because this piece doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It actually slots in above this, these two stanchions. That plate goes in here. It actually goes in here. It does not go to the bottom right here. So this butts up right in here. And this piece needs to go, as you see here, goes in between the red and the silver. So we need to put that in between the red and the silver and then slide it together like that. Then the next two screws you want to put back I think are going to be these two that went in the plastic which I should have gotten another screwdriver but I didn't. I'm going to go get a different screwdriver. Be right back.
getting these lined up can be a bit of a bear. these back. Still nice and square. You'll notice how this goes, the red piece goes inside you have to do the same thing with this because the back screws go through those holes. So, three holes across the top, right there, three tabs, and then you've got to perform the sandwich. try to put these screws back in actually which are these screws which this gets entertaining because it's completely blind sometimes you hit it just right though Sometimes you don't. I think that's it. You got to try to get the hole in the silver and the red and the black all lined up. There it goes. The fronts are usually a little easier because you didn't have to take that apart. like everything else tighten it till it strips back on after don't forget your last two here and here It's time for the handle. And as we saw before, the handle has a spacer and a spring on each side. So this piece has to get, it doesn't force in, you put it in like that. You kind of Set it in straight at it and then let it fall. But before you do that, <laughs> that's when the spacer and the spring have to go on. Now you see how much fun this becomes. So you have to do that one. Hold it. Put the spacer spring on this side and then 
do the same. Then you can put your screw with the washer in, making sure nothing moved. take our upper handle put it together and you can match up the flat spot on that with the flat spot on here down and we're ready to test it. Probably shouldn't be running this in the house, but I'm not going to be running it for very long. I'm just going to see if that flame eye works. Phew. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn it to pilot. Push down. See the difference? Now that's pointed, the flame is right at the flame eye now. Let up, it's good. Whoop. Turn her on. And that's the big difference, is that flame is a very different shape than this one was for whatever reason. Now maybe this one got dirty, I don't know. But that's much better, and that is going to keep it lit. Turn the light off so we can see it. Nice warm glow. Turn it down. Back up. Back down. Pilot. And off. Fantastic. And then finish it up. Caution hot. Put those back in there where they go. Rotate it up. She's done. Phew. I don't know. <laughs> now, this cannot be assembled by a robot. The handwork required to put this thing together is probably one of the reasons they're as expensive as they are. That's a heck of a little piece of engineering right there. But anyway, so you get yourself one of these. If I can find it, I'll link it in my Amazon affiliate. I do appreciate the people who do use that. It does help the channel. And We'll have a few more videos over the next couple of days or week or so as I repair a few things that uh, went a little wonky on our trip. Other than that, I thank you all for watching and I hope you're having a good holidays. Merry Christmas.